Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. She is amazing in what she does because she works with humans. She works with animals. And she makes a connection with them as a psychic, as a communicator. And she's back with us, learning a lot today to connect with our animals and then some. Shirley Scott is back here with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, Steve, and you? I'm doing well. I was thinking of you this morning Mm -hmm. because I have a recent situation with my cats and I was thinking maybe I should communicate with them if that's even possible to get an answer as to why they're doing something. Sure, we can see. I'm I'm sure you've been presented with situations where animals are acting differently, maybe behavioral type things. You're not a behaviorist. You can't make an animal change, but I believe that you can find why they do what they do or why things have changed, right? Right. Exactly. Yes. So out of nowhere, my one of my cats, I would assume it's one of them, is peeing outside the litter box. Just happened. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to figure out why. Um a new one for me and i've done it before in other situations where i've sent an image to my pets to get them to either do something or motivate like i've sent an image in my mind to my dog where you know, it might have been in a rush and i need he's outside i need him to go potty so that we can you know i can get to work or whatever it might be honestly it's worked like i've just sent that picture of him yeah. i'm wondering if i what I should do in the litter box situation. Do you have any, any thoughts, any advice? Yeah, first of all, um, when we need to make sure that the cat does not have a urinary tract infection or a bladder infection. Um, cats, usually when they have an infection, they will not go in the litter box because they have to cover it up, and if they get it on their paws, then they lick it off and they reinfect themselves, hmm. and they don't like the smell. So if a cat is going outside the litter box, like near the litter box, but outside of it, 99.9% of the time they have, they're getting an infection of some kind. Wow. Okay. Um, If they are, you know, marking or spraying, that's a completely different situation. And if they are peeing on your bed or your couch or something like that, Literally, that means they are pissed off at you, <laughs> and they are showing you. Hmm. Um, I am thinking that maybe a um, a vet call um, to see if this one um, is starting to get an infection. Once we rule that out, then we can talk to them, because usually this is what happens, and they'll tell me they're not feeling really well. Um, doesn't mean they won't eat or drink. It just means that their insides are not feeling well, and they can smell their own infection. Mm, so they know something's up. Yep. Okay. Well, I didn't even think of that. The only thing I can think of is, I, for me, my litter box, and since they were kittens, I will take a litter box, I'll cover it with a plastic bag, then put the litter in. It's worked. Mm-hmm. Never had a problem. The only thing I'm thinking of is in the last few weeks, I changed the type of bags that I use. Just got them in bulk, different material, different, you know, mm-hmm. cut. Maybe that's, maybe it's caught up to them or one of them. When, How many times has this cat peed outside the litter box? Two times now. In the last week or um, two times in a row? Yeah, I changed, I changed the box out, you know, after scooping in a week. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay, let me, what's the cat's name? Well, here's the thing. I have two, so I haven't narrowed down which one it is. Okay, what are their names? Uh, Rocco and Ricky. Rocco. Yeah. Does okay. Um, he um, he does not like the smell of the new bags, but he and that and that's stressing him out a little bit. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Is he usually kind of a um, a little stressy cat? Um, Rocco is the, he's the super mush. The other one yeah. is, is, is Ricky is a little more, uh, standoffish, a little more careful. Rocco is the one when there's not a lot of people around, like any, any cat, you know, a lot of people that get a little stressed. Sure. Um, he'll, he'll just, he'll just roll him on his back and pet his belly and he'll kiss you and hug you. And, you know, yeah, he's, he's kind of wired that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I, I would, you know, um, I'm going to say I would watch him. If this continues, I get him to the vet to have him checked. I am going to talk to him and tell him that, you know, he may not like the smell, but it, it, he's also making you very sad. Animals hate to make us sad. They just don't like it. So I'm going to ask him to please not do it anymore unless he is sick. If he thinks he is sick, um, to let you know, and he's getting it. Hmm. He is a sweetie. He's a sweetheart. He really is. <laughs> he is. Uh, there's no, I don't think you'll ever meet a cat like this. It's just a, um, he's different. He's like he's, yeah. he's like a dog and a cat all in one. I was just going to say he's more like a dog. <laughs> he really is. He really, I got to yeah. tell you, he really is. He's the, yeah. the biggest mush, very food motivated. Um, but yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. You know, it's, um, I, yeah. I, I, so I'm, he's got the message that it's making you unhappy. Um, but I'm also telling him, you know, if he, if he, if he starts, keeps doing this, I'd have him checked. Um, because he, there's a smell that he does not like. He, there is a smell he doesn't like. And, um, and it's, kind of making turning him off hmm. yeah um i'll see if i can get the other bags <laughs> that's the only thing that's the only thing i think of that's different that's it nothing else has yeah. changed yeah. Um, and <laughs> sometimes it can be the smell of the bags but there is definitely a smell so um i'm gonna i'm gonna say that we we need to watch him for a beginning of an infection too okay we do okay yeah. and and you know it's interesting i'll share with you when uh, I adopted him. The adoption agency said, don't always feed, he's, they're both males, don't always feed dry food. They need to have wet food as well because um, male cats, if they just have dry food, can develop a urinary tract infection. Right. Um, so, yeah. And crystals. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Boy, you know a lot. I, I do. And <laughs> the other thing about cats and, and their moisture content, if you feed them dry all the time, um, they don't get the moisture they need because cats get a lot of their moisture from and, and their liquid thing from canned food because um, it's got the moisture. It's just like going outside and, you know, grabbing a mouse or something. They get the moisture sure. and they get some extra terrine, which cats need. If cats don't have terrine, um, they will develop crystals. They'll develop bladder and urinary tract infections because they're the only animal on, on God's green earth that does not produce their own terrine. And the organ meats from animals, the liver, the heart, the um, kidneys and stuff, um, are naturally our terrine. Um, we have that in our body and it, um, we reproduce it where cats do not. Hmm. You know, no. I, I have been thinking to also include more uh, wet food in his diet. I just give uh, both of them wet food in the morning and uh, I think I need to kick that in and take away some of the dry food. Yeah, probably a good idea. And dry food, too. You know, if they're really hungry and they go over and they eat a lot of dry food, then they'll run to get some water, of course, because it's dry. And then that dry food will expand in their stomach, and then they'll throw up. It's not that they are sick or they have anything wrong with them. It's just that the dry food, as you know, if you add, you know, one piece, drop of water to one piece, it doubles in size. So it gets into their stomach. They drink a lot of water. It expands. Their stomach gets too full, and they'll throw it up. Gotcha. Okay, so um, that being said, you, you, you do run deep in terms of knowing, um, it's not just that you're a communicator, what is your background with, with animals here? You know, I, I really don't have one other than what I've downloaded from the universe and my experiences. I mean, I haven't really, I haven't taken any courses or anything like that. And things just come through, though, that um, sometimes amaze me. <laughs> Um, that come through and and I just pass it on. You know, there was one time I was doing a reading for a horse, and um, I kept telling the gal kept saying he's acting really funny. He won't go to his left. He won't go to his left. And so I got in touch with the horse, and the horse said, "I can't. When I look out of my left eye, I see a big hole in the ground." So his left eye was showing him this big dark hole, and he was afraid he was going to fall in it. And, um, you know, I don't know a whole lot about horse's anatomy, but I told her, I said, you need to have the, his skull adjusted. And, and I said, it, it's going to help his eye. And she looked at me like I was nuts. And she said, uh, yeah, okay. Well, she looked into cranial sacral for horses, 
and had somebody come out and they adjusted the, the horse's head and all of this mucus came out of its left nostril and cleared up and, and it cleared the eye up in an instant. Wow. So things just come through. And I, I have to, you know, I just kind of put that in my memory bank and so that we can, you know, we have to, sometimes the, the animal doesn't know sometimes if they have cancer or a urinary tract. They can smell it, but they can't tell you, you know, I've got stomach cancer or I've got a urinary tract. They say, you know, something smells funny to me and I don't like it. Or they will tell me, you know, something hurts. Um, and then we'll look into it. Um, this morning I just got a call from somebody with a cat um, who, um, unfortunately, um, I looked at, a, at it and it looks like it's got a lymphoma. And she had told me that um, six months ago the vet said that his blood count showed that he might be getting a cancer and now he's losing weight and he knows he's sick. And um, so it's a matter of, you know, asking the animal and then going into a human, you know, what could be causing this, you know, is it cancer, is it just an infection type thing. But the animal always knows when it's sick, always. You know, I, I've often heard that, and even to the point where they know if they're not doing well and may radically be, life may be changing, that they, they'll go and hide if they sense that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that, that yeah. the end may be coming near. Well, a client, another client that I had this morning um, said that they had just lost their dog, unfortunately, but he had gone out for two days in a row and was digging in the yard and digging in the yard, and then they'd call him in, and he you know, he'd kind of stopped eating, and the third day they went out, and he had dug this big hole underneath a rhododendron bush, and there he was. He looked like he was asleep, but he had dug this hole and gone into it and laid down and passed. And so they do do things like that. They know, and, and if he was in the wild, he would have done the same thing and either died or waited for a predator to come get him because that's what they do. That's, you know, who they are. Um, I tell people that, um, you know, the elephant graveyard, I, I think we've all heard of it where, you know, the old elephants and the sick elephants will go away from the herd and they go to a certain place to die. And the reason they do that is because, first of all, they know they're old and they're weak. And so they're putting out these pheromones of that. You know, a predator can smell a sick or old, weak animal. So instead of bringing the predators to the herd, they will say goodbye to the herd and they will go off to um, a place where they know that they will bring predators to them because of their smell and they will also die very quickly. The predators will take them out quickly, and they won't have to suffer through a long illness. What has come through for you when communicating? Messages that you've gotten? I find this fascinating when things come up and, it's like, well, I wasn't even thinking that, and then it got validated, and uh, it was all good. Anything that uh, really stands out in your mind? Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, uh, well, the horse thing, for one thing... Um, there was also, um, I was out at a farm one time and reading a bunch of animals, and this gal said, why does this goat go around every morning to every animal? This goat went to every animal and every animal. And I got in touch with the goat, and the goat said, well, I'm checking on them because a cat about a week before had fallen into their swimming pool, and the cat couldn't get out. And the goat literally saw the cat, in distress, ran to their house and knocked on the door, knocked on the door, and they were like, what the heck, what the heck, until they came out and they actually saved the cat. And when I told her that, she said, there's no way you could have known that. (laughs) Wow. But the goat then, from that point on, was checking with everybody on the farm and making sure they were okay. He did it every morning and he did it every night. And if somebody was missing, he would go to their house and, and tell them somebody was missing. Isn't it amazing what, what, what our animals can do that we don't even give them credit for? It is. It, it is amazing what they do. You know, like I say, my goat, um, 20 minutes before it rains, he goes into his house and stands there and waits for it. I mean, you can set your clock. If there's going to be rain, he's going to be in his house because 
my goat, I think, is the only goat in the world that thinks he's going to melt if he gets wet. But he, he hates rain, so he goes into his house. Yeah. So is, is it that he can detect that there is a storm coming up? Yes. Yes. And most animals can by the barometer change. Animals are very affected by barometer change. That's why um, they can tell if there's a tornado or a, you know, a big storm coming before it hits because the barometer goes nuts. And they feel that not only in their body but in their ears, and they smell it. You know, my dog can hear thunder like 10 minutes before I do. But they, they can feel and smell, you know, if I watch my animals, they can smell things sometimes an hour before it comes. But that barometer change for them um, can drive them really insane because sometimes it goes up and down and back and forth. Um, so, but they are very in tune to the weather and the conditions of the earth around them. And they have to be because, you know, in the animal kingdom, it's not a Walt Disney World. It really is eat or be eaten. It really is. And so they have to be aware of what is going on right now in their world. Have you ever been told something imminent from an animal that you needed to deliver right away? Where, where let's say, let's say Shirley had had a, uh, a something that that needed to to be passed on. Okay, I'm not sure what you mean, but animals live in such the present moment. Mm. And and if we could, if I could say anything to anybody, you know, an animal won't come to you and say, "Hey, I want dinner in five minutes." You know, I want dinner now. You know, I have to go potty now. And so they will come and say that, you know, somebody, they, they also can pick up, like, you know, my, my a human needs to watch their heart or their, the human needs to watch their blood pressure um, because I can smell it. I can smell the things. And so they can do that, like, right now. It's, like, in, right in that moment. Or they know that the... Um, from what they're smelling or what they're actually watching, the energy from a human that, you know, it's like they're going to they're gonna faint. We need to do something right now. They need something right now. Okay. And they can do that, yeah. So it, that answered that. Okay. <laughs> uh, they, do, they don't. It's, it's in the moment. And the more I think about it, yeah, it's right. When my dog has to go outside, it's now. He's not, you know, it's not like, man. I want to go out. No, it's now. We got to go now. Uh, it's now. Animals, you know, animals will think. You can see them thinking. You can see them go, you know, if I go over here, I had an experience that was bad over there last time. So I might not want to go over there because they're going to remember that. You can see them think if they've, you know, if they've had abuse and, and there's a noise or, you know, if you pick up a newspaper and they've been hit with a newspaper, they're going to remember that. But they don't think about, you know, if I um, go out here five minutes from now and, and do something, what's going to happen? They will consider, you know, they know not to jump off a cliff because they'll look down and they'll see it. But they remember their past experiences and they will relate them to the present. But they live in the present moment about, you know, I want to play ball right now or or that type of thing, but they do remember the past. And animals do have PTSD if they have had a bad past. Hmm. It is a wonderful thing for anybody, humans, animals, living in the moment, realizing oh, yeah. that the power of, of being here and now. And you can see more and feel more. You know, I have to be, I'm so grateful because my animals and being an animal communicator has trained me to be in the very present moment. Mm. And it's all, you know, it's all energy, the, the telepathy and the energy and the pheromones. But it's taught me to be in the present moment. It's also taught me that when anybody or any animal makes a different thought or a different action, it can change that energy. And so being in the present goes okay, this might happen in the future and you can predict it from what people have done, but you can always change it. And every action changes the future moment, the, you know, that one second, that one second. 
Um, so living in the present moment makes you so much aware of what your next choice should be. The game changer in my journey was about almost four years ago where I met somebody and they, they literally said, how come you don't live in the moment? And I, I had no idea what they were talking about. <laughs> took me weeks to figure it out. I'm like, oh, oh. And then it took time to change my mindset, to live in the moment and not mm-hmm. to, I don't want to use the word worry, but not to think about the past, not to think about the future. It's all about the now. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. And now, yeah. you know, I see it even more surely based on what you you just said in terms of why animals seem to be at peace they they've they've got a pretty good life going on there because yeah. if you live in the moment slice that second right now right here and now this moment there's nothing wrong it's all good no it's all good it's yeah. all good you know my pivotal moment was when i was on the other side you know watching the paramedics work on my body and knowing i was um, my body was dying and the voice that said for me to go back, what it said, and this is well over 25 years ago, I'll never forget it, it said, go back and stay conscious. And when I first got back into my body, you know, I was going like, okay, you're alive, you're alive, you know, I'm thinking all these things. And then as I thought about it, it was like, no, you need to be conscious of what you're eating, what you're thinking, what you're doing every second in the now. And that hit me so hard that that was the beginning of this making sure that consciously I really knew what I was doing and being aware of every moment so you don't lose your car keys or you you know you don't leave the house and go dear did I lock the house that type of thing because animals will do in the moment and they know what they're doing. I mean, they know, you know, even when they're excited, it's like, yeah, I'm excited, we're going for a ride, you know, that type of thing. But they don't worry so much about the future or the past that they live there. Say that last part again. They don't worry so much about, um, they live in the present enough that they don't worry about the, the past or the present, they, or the future. They don't live in the past, they don't live in the future. Yep. They live in the present moment. Yeah, it's like you say. It's right now. It's like I want this right now. Yeah, and then there's that, that. There's no debating it. There's no thinking yeah. about it. It's yeah. uh, now. That's not to say that if something like you know PTSD kicks in, where right. uh, something happened to them, and maybe on a regular basis, where now it's ingrained in them. Um, you know, walking down the street or, you know, doing something. Well, that wasn't good last time or the time before that. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that again. Nope, I'm not right. going to do that. Uh, but maybe that's not living in the past. I don't know. Maybe that's more instinct kicking in. Yeah, yeah, that is. It's not living in the past. It's more a remembrance of usually pain like any of us would have. Sure. It, it's more of that hurt me last time and I'm not going to go there again. So... That, but they don't think about it all the time like we do. You know, a, um, an action could bring it on to them, or a noise could remind them of it, but they don't, what I call, worry about it. It's, and here again, that noise and that action is in the present moment to remind them of the past to keep them safe. Right. Or, or maybe something pleasurable. You know, lately, mm-hmm. when I come back for a walk with my dog, I sometimes I give him a treat. Like, let's go back, get a treat. And mm-hmm. now it's like, I'll just say, all right, let's go back. And he's like, oh, yeah, all right, let's go. Because <laughs> oh, I'm going to get a treat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. Were, but, it, but I think it's coming from the reminder that, you know, yeah, we're heading back. And then they make the connection. Absolutely. You know, you know yeah. it, it's like a horse heading toward the barn. You know, if you've got a horse that wants to go toward the barn and you're riding it, there's no way you're going to stop it because that horse is going like, my hay's back there and my water's back there and my, you know, I'm sheltered back there and I'm safe back there. Yep. So animals have memories, you know, they, they have memories, but they don't, um, they don't have the guilt of the past. Mm-hmm. They don't have the um, worry of the past. They do get um, anxious when they have the PTSD, which everybody does, but there's not a a real guilt with them at all. You know, the guilt 
would be in a present moment when they've chewed up a pillow and you go, what are you doing? And they go, uh-oh. And then they come over and go, I'm sorry, and you forgive them, and they go, okay, now let's move on. Amazing. I, I want to share with everybody that you have a number of books and CDs that deal with animal communication, facing your fears. You even have a children's book based on your goat. Yes. Uh, and I wondered if that, that goat was real, and you just confirmed that a moment ago. Oh, yeah, my goat's real. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's, he's uh, uh, ten and a half. Amazing. And and you also have books, uh, you know, even understanding what it's like to connect with those who have passed on to the other side. That's just a piece of what you do. Spiritual advisement, psychic readings, animal communication, and it's all at your website. And I just got another book published um, this week. So oh. um, it's called Which Path Leads to Forever? And it is about somebody who is out of her body on a near-death experience, and she gets to experience the other side and walk with a, a guy named Pop who takes her on several different paths, and it's kind of an interesting book. So um, that's available on my website, too. Are there shades or shadows of your experience contained within that book? Yes. Yeah, I figured so. Mm. Yeah. The website is Shirley-Scott, with two T's, S-C-O-T-T dot com, Shirley-Scott dot com. Uh, check it out. Phone number's up there. And start that start that conversation to communication. Uh, fabulous talking with you, Shirley. Uh, I didn't mean to, you know, dig in about my, uh, my litter box situation, but you know what? There's a reason for everything, and it uh, proved to me and everybody that you run deep when it comes to animals. It, Thank you. You're not just communicating. You truly are connecting. And uh, super cool. Looking forward next time we get together. Okay. We'll talk to you next week. You got it. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.